Hey guys, it's Leah B from Prestige Veteran Medical Consulting. I am a U.S. Army veteran, physician assistant, and former compensation and pension examiner. So today I wanted to come on and discuss a topic that I think is really interesting related to veterans' health care benefits. Uh, typically, we discuss veterans' benefit administration benefits, like um, what happens in CMP exams, secondary service connection for um, disability purposes and things like that. But we've been doing this series on Veterans Health Administration benefits like vision, dental care, who qualifies, where to get information and things like that. So today I wanted to come on and discuss community care and what does that mean? And this is a really huge topic, so we're not going to cover everything today, but I wanted to sort of show you where you can gather more information and discuss just general care in the community or community care. So I'm going to pull up VA.gov's um, help document on this because I think it's awesome. I've said this before. I think VA.gov has some really outstanding information uh, for veterans to just research what may apply to them. OK, so that's usually where I go when I'm looking. I'm a veteran myself. When I'm looking for information about my own health care or different benefits, I go straight to the horse's mouth to VA.gov and just look and see what the data says there. So let me just present my screen. All right. So this is on VA.gov. So this is, um, as you can see up here at the top, it says community care, veteran care overview. <clears throat> so VA provides, like I said, health care for veterans from providers in your local community outside of the VA. Not all, this is not like all inclusive, right? So we're going to get into some of those details here today. Veterans may be eligible to receive care from a community provider when VA cannot provide the care that is needed. This care is provided on behalf of and paid for by the VA. Okay, Community care is available to veterans based on certain conditions and eligibility requirements and in consideration of a veteran's specific needs and circumstances. Community care must be authorized first by the VA um, before a veteran can receive care from a community care provider. So this is like many types of insurances, right? So if you have, let's say you have a specific type of insurance, when you go see your primary care provider, they may author, they may put in a referral for you to go see whatever, a ENT doctor, a sleep specialist, whoever, and then the insurance often will provide an approval or an authorization for that. So this is kind of similar, not exactly the same. Um, but essentially, there are different types of care. So just a general overview, there's general community care, which we're going to talk about today, urgent care visits, emergency care, foreign medical care, which I think is a really cool topic that we're going to talk about in the future, home health and hospice care, Indian and tribal health services, in vitro fertilization, state veterans homes, flu shots. And then this talks about costs and billing. Um, for those issues. But like I said, today we're going to just talk about general community care. Um, so hang on. So again, we're on va.gov. So you can get to that. You can access that same location on va.gov and look at this as well. Okay, so eligibility for community care outside of the VA. As a veteran, you may be eligible for care outside of the VA. This means that the, the VA will pay for the costs associated with care from a healthcare provider in the, that network. Okay, so they have to be approved, meaning that whoever that care provider is, they have to have done paperwork with the VA to get in network with them so that they have an arrangement and an agreement about what those costs are and that they're approved and they're going to meet um, specific standards or guidelines that are mutually agreed upon. Okay. And that is just how healthcare works in general. Usually there's pre-agreed contracts between agencies. Okay. So you can always choose to get care at a VA health facility if you're eligible, right? So here's a, a hyperlink for you to find an in-network community care provider and another one, learn how to get community care. So here are some of those eligibility requirements. So you must meet both of these requirements. You're enrolled in or eligible for VA health care and you have an approval. We talked about that approval. So you have to have an approval from your VA health care team. They have to authorize it before you get care from that community provider. So usually says, except for certain cases like urgent or emergency care, which we'll talk about on another video. So for example, if you just want to get care for your migraines and the VA has availability for you, they're probably not going to just authorize you to go see 
a neurologist um, outside in the care in the community if they have that resource or they can do that treatment for you at the VA. Um, that doesn't mean that they won't, but it has to make sense for them to send you out into the network like they can't in-house take care of you for that issue, right? There has to be a specific reason or whatever. So that's why they review it and authorize it first. Um, so you, so we talked about meeting both of these requirements. So we talked about being enrolled and having an approval, and then you also must meet at least one of the following requirements. You need a service that VA doesn't provide at the healthcare facility at all. Okay. You live in a state or territory that doesn't have a full service VA health facility, or you live in Alaska, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, or Wyoming, or you are qualified under the 40 mile distance requirement and live in a location that would still make you eligible under these requirements, or we can't provide the care you need within our standard for drive or wait times. You and your VA provider agree that getting care from an in-network community provider is in your best medical interest, or that they can't provide the service you need in the way that meets your quality standards, meets their quality standards, sorry. Examples of when you may be eligible. Here are six examples, a service they don't provide. So the person, you might need dialysis, right? So your kidneys are failing, you might need dialysis, and but they don't provide dialysis at um, the facility. So you're eligible to get dialysis from an in-network community care provider. So they don't have that resource, you need it, you're an eligible veteran, they're gonna send you out to that community care provider. Example number two, no full service VA healthcare facility. So if you live in some of these areas that are listed here, um, and there is not a VA healthcare facility in your state or territory, you can get care from an in-network provider. Um, example three, qualification under the 40 mile distance requirement. If you live in Alaska, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, or Wyoming, and you previously qualified under veterans choice program, 40 mile distance requirement, you're eligible to get care from an in-network community care provider. They don't want you driving hundreds of miles to get health care. Okay. Drive and wait time standards for primary care or mental health. You need a primary or mental health appointment, but they can't schedule you in a VA healthcare facility that's within a 30 minute average drive from your home, or they can't schedule an appointment for you within the next 20 days. In each of these cases, you're eligible to get primary and mental health care from an in network provider. For special, so FYI, there is a community care phone number you can call at your VA facility and talk to the coordinator. Um, and the coordinator should be a liaison to the network provider. They do need that authorization from your uh, provider as well. They, they should be a liaison between all these individuals. Example five, your best medical interest. You have certain health condition that your VA provider doesn't have experience treating, but you live near an in-network community provider who specializes in the condition. If you and the VA provider agree that it is in your best medical interest to get care from the community provider, you're eligible for community care for this, vet, for this condition. Quality standards. So you need cardiology care for a heart problem, but they've determined the local VA health facility doesn't provide cardiology care that meets our quality standards. You may be eligible to get cardiology care from an in-network community provider. Okay. So let's go back up and look at this search tool. So find an in-network community pri provider. It's pretty cool, right? Like you can look up your city and state. So I'm going to put in, um, I live in Bernie, Texas. And facility type. We're going to just say VA healthcare. Search. So these are all um, VA federal clinics. That's Data Point Dental. Let's see. These are all VA clinics. Let's look at let's look at urgent care because those are all. I know we have one of those in my town that is in VA community care. So my urgent care clinic, Main Street Urgent Care Clinic, these are in network with community care. So these, and we're gonna talk about urgent care on another day, but these are non-VA facilities that are in network, okay? All right, so anyways, let me jump off of this share screen. So I think this is a really powerful tool and I know we always beat these um, VA benefit 
uh, videos to death all the time. We talk about them, but like, let's not forget about that healthcare stuff because there are so many amazing healthcare related benefits that VA offers that are just not tapped into. I know VA sometimes get about gets a bad rap for veterans healthcare. I think veterans healthcare is fantastic. Um, I personally use veterans healthcare. I know not everybody has the same experience, but I love that they will mail you medications. You can chat with your provider on secure messaging. Um, they call me when my prescriptions need to be refilled and they send me an automated like, hey, do you want to refill this prescription? Like where else do you get that kind of service for your health? So I think they're doing a really great job. This is Leah B's personal opinion. I think the Veterans Healthcare Administration is doing a great job of the health side of things. I know a lot of y'all may not agree, but this is just my two, this is Leah B's two cents. So please drop some comments. If there's other veterans healthcare related issues that you'd like to hear about, I would love to talk, talk about them um, or any other topics in general. So as always, thank you for watching. Please like, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys soon. All right.